Hello. The reason you found this video is because you searched the internet because you were having trouble with this little guy right here. This is one of these flammable vapor sensors for a ream water heater or something close to it. Now this little guy gave me tons of trouble. This is my third one here in my hand, which I disassembled and tried to hack with rubbing some graphite across um, the electrodes here, which generates a uh, resistance to the current. This is a new one I got from Ream because they figured you're gonna need an extra one because this thing fails so much and gives false alarms. Because apparently this sensor thinks everything that you see in the universe is flammable. It is gasoline, kerosene, um, you name it. Not true. So what I did to fix that was I put across the electrodes here on my control. Um, this is where the sensor would plug in. So what I did was put across the electrodes a 22,000 ohm resistor. Um, I chose 22,000 because you need between 5,000 and 70,000 um, resistance across this circuit basically to make the sensor think that um, the silicone and carbon that is in place is still in place and has not been separated by presence of flammable fumes. So apparently gasoline fumes will cause the silicone that's impregnated with carbon to separate and that way breaking the circuit and then your resistance is shot. Therefore it trips the sensor over there and then you get eight flashes in my case, which means this sensor has detected flammable fumes, which I can tell you right now, it did not several times. So what I did was from Amazon, ordered a multimeter, 10 bucks, and ordered a big box of resistors for about seven bucks. All right, you get a ton of resistors, all different resistances. So like I said, between 5,000 and 70,000 will do it. So what I chose was a 22K ohm uh, resistor and it comes with a whole bunch of them which is great not that you'll ever need them again because once you do this it's a permanent fix so you might be asking yourself does this mean my house is going to blow up no it means if you store flammable fluids such as gasoline and whatnot close to your pilot light in your water heater it will blow up does that make sense so um all i did was Hold this in place with duct tape for now because I didn't want to solder it in, but you can certainly solder this in and make it permanent, but I just left it in there with duct tape um, just to make sure it worked. And then you can see that my status light is a nice, calm one beats per three seconds. Okay, I could demonstrate breaking the circuit and showing you the eight beats, which is pretty easy to fix just by slapping in that resistor again. But I think if you've gone this far looking for a video that you know all about, how to reset this guy and what eight beats looks like and what the sensor failure looks like. So um, basically what I did was set my multimeter to 200K and then I tested uh, the resistance across this hack first. Uh, this gave me about 2000K and apparently if you rub more graphite on this just from a pencil, you can get more resistance up to and above the threshold of 5000. Um, but I was like, you know what, it just seems too iffy. So I bought this $7 uh, box of resistors and knew for a fact what I was getting. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Once I put this thing in, did the reset, which is, you know, unplugging for 10 seconds, plugging it back in, turning this guy all the way very hot to low seven times, reset it, instant music to my ears was this water heater kicking back on and uh, yeah that's pretty much all there is to it so just to recap you got to get a resistor between 5,000 and 70,000 ohms across these electrodes which completes the circuit which basically tricks this thing into thinking that everything is a-ok -okay and there's no highly combustible vapors in the presence of now the missing sensor which is good news to me so I'm just gonna 
tape this back up just to basically hold that in place and then I'll put the door back on. Um, after that, you're really good to go. And then you have this really nice um, multimeter, which is really cool. It's got a backlight. That's neat. Um, and you got a whole bunch of resistors that you can play with and like make science projects and do all kinds of fun stuff with. I have no idea what you would do with all these resistors, but apparently if you're into building stuff that takes resistors, you have a big supply of all kinds of resistors. You only need one. And like I said, I chose the 22K, which is between 5,000 and 70,000. That obviously did the job. As soon as I reset that guy, it was a done deal and it kicked back on and it's been on for a little over a week now. Everything's happy. I can dump gasoline on that if I want. I probably won't. But I can tell you right now that um, a speaker's not flammable. This is what was tripping it before, by the way. Almost tripped. A ladder's not flammable. Um, bikes aren't flammable. A hybrid is not flammable. A plug-in hybrid at that is not flammable. Fans aren't flammable. Cardboard boxes are not flammable. Um, I did move some latex paint and house cleaners out of the way. That's what was here before. Still not flammable. But according to uh, some of the literature that I found from Ream and the manufacturer of these uh, sensors, bleach can set it off. I think it even says here in the package um, what kinds of things can set it off. Pretty uh, silly stuff. Gasoline, which makes sense. Cleaning compounds, paint solvents. That all makes sense. Or the presence of bleach or ammonia does not make sense. But what do I know about flammable liquids? All I know is how to take things apart, try to hack them, and then really hack them. So this is a permanent fix for you. Um, again, if you are storing gasoline and whatnot around your pilot light, then this video is not for you. You need more help. And doing this little hack bypass is not for you. Um, you can't fix stupid, like they say. So. Yeah, if you're storing gasoline and whatnot around a water heater, then you have other problems. A gas water heater at that, or flammable fumes in any kind of enclosed space, you should know better. Um, other than that, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. A little Amazon shopping, a little duct tape is a cure-all. And I appreciate you guys watching this video. I really hope this helps you all, because I know this was a big frustrating thing for me, but I fixed it, and you're welcome. Thanks.